Hey guys, welcome to the Bone Maniac Podcast. This is episode two. Welcome back, Maniacs. I am your host, Josh Kiter. This is the Bone Maniacs Podcast, episode two. We are fueled by Dead Down Wind and Ramcat Broadheads, and we are super excited to have you guys along with us today. I've got the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Shane Mowry on the phone right now, and we are going to dive into the beginnings of the Bone Maniacs, kind of how we got started, how we're going to keep things rolling. We're going to talk about some exciting things for 2019, and we're looking forward to unpacking this with you guys. So do not go anywhere. We will be right back with Shane Mowry. Scent prevention doesn't start in the woods. It starts from square one and doesn't stop until your goal is reached. It's not an afterthought. It's a complete scent control system. For every season, for every species. Until your target is found. Dead down wind. Ramcat's patented concave scoops create an airfoil that drafts wind over the blades and eliminates wind planing, making them the most accurate broadheads on the market. Ramcat. Hits like a ram, cuts like a cat. What's up, buddy? How are you doing, Shane? What is going on, man? That's uh, that's quite a uh, introduction there, the myth, the legend there. What's up with that? <laughs> You're my hero, man. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> oh i tell everybody all the time oh, man, I, mean, I tell everybody all the time it's just it's just such a blast and it's such a good time just to get to to talk to you all the time when you get back from all these hunts and and do all this crazy stuff out there in idaho it's like you know i kind of live vicariously through you so it's a blast to uh to just sit and chat with you and, and kind of hear about what you've been doing and what's been going on and and to be a part of this it's just it's really fun Oh, right on, man. Uh, these hunts are pretty intense most of the time. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm just happy that I have the health to be able to keep doing it, man. And, you know, hopefully I still got 30 more years to be able to make it happen. Heck yeah, man. I hope we have that long. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> yeah. These kids, these uh, kids we're raising, man, they're going to make us old anyway. So we better hurry up and get stuff done. <laughs> oh man, you're not kidding. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, then I, then Gina, she's all the time like, uh, hey, I'm trying out a new keto recipe. And I'm like, keto? What's that? Is that like <laughs> some type of Chinese stuff or what? I know, man. And I'm like. <laughs> I eat out too much at work because I just, I got to get out of the office. And my wife's been packing my lunch for me. And <laughs> she packed she packed chicken and broccoli the other day. And I ate it. And I, I mean, it was good. Don't get me wrong. But the guys at work were like, man, what happened to you? Did you lose a bet or something? And I'm like, no, man. My wife said I was fat. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah she didn't actually come out and say it she put it in my launch box <laughs> there you go exactly oh i know what she's saying every time she smiles at me or looks at me she looks at my face and smiles and then looks at my gut and frowns so <laughs> <laughs> well, oh man, well you, uh, you get up to idaho we'll take care of that exactly all the backpacking and stuff we would be doing <laughs> in the backcountry that's that's for darn sure all right, man. So here's what I've been telling everybody. Here, here's what we've been doing. I kind of went through uh, uh, episode one of the podcast and just kind of told folks what we were going to kind of get into today. But what I wanted to unpack today with you was kind of where all this got started. You know, I shared with the listeners how, oh gosh, what was it back in probably 2014, 2015, um, I approached you guys, yeah. you and Gina actually, about a sponsorship from another hunting show that I was actually working with. It was just a local show. We reached about a million homes with the, uh, the viewership numbers that we were, we were getting from local television. But I reached out to you about a sponsorship deal and you were like, Holy crap, dude, what the heck are you doing on a hunting show? And that sounds kind of cool. How can I do it? <laughs> <laughs> so you went out and bought a camera and here we are. I mean, four years later, here we are working on the bone maniac. So what I, what I wanted to do was kind of just, unpack a little bit like just kind of your headspace what the whole process of how you went from you know buying a camera to hunting with a camera to getting to where now i mean we've got 
we've got some pretty pretty sick stuff, and we're going to unpack some of that too. But we got some pretty sick stuff going on here at the Bone Maniac. So just take us through, man. Talk us talk us through how you kind of yeah. how you kind of got that in your headspace and and what you were thinking when you decided to be a maniac and buy a camera because that's that's a big step for a lot of people. Well, yeah, I mean the, the maniac's always been in there, you know, just <laughs> just all growing up. But I mean, yeah, when you, when you approached me with that, you know, I was like, well, yeah, sure, man. I mean, there's always marketing dollars, you know, because you know I build log homes and you know, and being able to name drop on social media and on some airtime, yeah, why not? You know, and then uh, you know, of course, I was always already, you know, I, as much as I hunted, you know, uh, to begin with, you know, going on hunts and you know, traveling, whether it's with, you know, with work or, you know, going out on different hunts throughout the country or wherever we're at, you know, um, it just felt right, you know? So I was, uh, you know, I'm thinking, Hey man, I don't know anything about videography. <laughs> you know, I, I know I go with pretty intense hunts, you know, and I'm like, I think I can do this. If not, well, I'll just hire a cameraman, right? <laughs> there you go. That's the that's the easiest thing to do. Is hey, if I can't run the camera, I know how to shoot a bow, so I'm just going to hire somebody else to run the camera for me. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely, man. Like, I know how to hunt. I, I, I got that. You know, I, maybe what I need to do is uh, maybe learn some of this technology stuff. And oh man, I, I'm still learning that. But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, when you you know approach me about that, I you know I was you know I was pretty much open arms about yeah, man, let's do it. And, uh, as we progressed and, you know, it's like, I was like, you know, it's kind of funny how, you know, as, you know, as we, as always friends growing up and right. you know, playing baseball, or not whatever mm-hmm. dad allowed us, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, always been in my, my blood to hunt and, and just, uh, you know, work and whatnot. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, Hey man, well, maybe maybe something we can work out here and, right. and so we did you know uh we tried it you know and you know both you know you was with you know uh the other folks there and you know and you know you just didn't like how things were going and right and um you know you're like hey man what do you think of this idea and i'm like well, let's run with it yeah you know so it, yeah you know it was a uh, it was one of those things that you know it was just a uh, uh, collaboration of minds for the right. most part i feel and, i always thought know, we now, were so. i always thought we were we were dumb enough to try it but then we ended up being smart enough to make it work <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. that's kind of where it, it, I, don't, I don't know it just seemed to fit because i always thought you know it's like man these guys that get into this you know the the videography part and the the video production piece i mean it just it's a lot of time it's a lot of work you know a lot of people think that you know, these hunting shows, these guys go out and they actually sit in the woods for however long the hunting show is. I mean, what is it, 22 minutes on the Outdoor Channel, Sportsman's Channel, Pursuit Channel, and it's just not the right. case. I mean, you're out there constantly, and, you know, a lot of these guys that are in the hunting industry know this, and, and a lot of people that actually hunt know that it doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes it does, which is we're just totally grateful for because it's like, man, now we get to kind of relax and the pressure's off a little bit and we get to, you know, do some – video production elements that make the show even better but man there's sometimes when it comes down to the wire but i always thought that man i always thought gosh we are so dumb for stepping out and doing this but then once we kind of got rolling it was like hey we we actually got something going here and maybe we're not as dumb as we thought we were (laughs) 